building and using an all sky camera. Hello, in this video we're going to look at building an all sky camera uh, with Raspberry Pi hardware, um, capturing meteors, ISS passes, moon rises and sets, and then we're going to look at creating star trail images and time lapses. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate this with a camera body that I designed. Uh, this particular body uses a Raspberry Pi Zero, um, which is brilliant if you just want to plug it in, kind of let it do, uh, do the captures and then download the images perhaps from a VNC session afterwards. If however you wanted to um, perhaps run a web server on it so that you can kind of log into it live, do all sorts of bits with it, you'd probably find that a, a Pi Zero would be a little bit under resourced for that. So you might want to opt for something a little bit bigger that you could put a, uh, a normal Raspberry Pi 4 in it. Um, the software that we're going to use is Thomas Jacqueline's um, All Sky Camera software, um, probably the most commonly used one and it's really good, really stable bit of software. Okay, so let's do a quick strip down of the All Sky Camera. Um, all the 3D print files will be available in the, a link on the video. Um, so yeah, you 3D print the body, the top is just a, a CCTV like dome lens, um, you can get hold of those on uh, like say Amazon or eBay. Um, and I've designed this so it's got kind of four attachment areas, so you can 3D print out these little legs and kind of screw it down to what you want to, or even just design your own things to attach to. Um, I've mounted mine on this kind of very makeshift thing that I use to, to kind of put out on my Velux windows, so it sits out on those. Um, but yeah, you can mount it on what you want. So four screws to take the CCTV dome off. So. Okay. Um, there is a little lip just around the edge, which should keep it all watertight when the um, the dome's on the top. So if look, we look inside, we've got uh, um, a Raspberry Pi camera module. This is the high quality camera module. Uh, and then I sourced uh, a 180 degree fisheye lens to go on the top of that. This band around the outside is a um, like a dew heater. Um, and there's a little controller for that. Um, I, so there's three different heat settings. I find, to be honest, that low is fine for most of the time. Perhaps on uh, colder times of the year, you might want to use middle. Um, I never really have to use high. It seems to be fine on, on what it is. Um, so yeah, that band literally just pops out like so. Um, this is held in with one screw just up here, and then beneath here we've got the um, Raspberry Pi Zero. So you can see at the bottom there, there's a little mount for the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, I've purposely done it so that it lifts it up, so that if any water was to get in, it shouldn't tuck it, touch any of the electrics. Um, obviously we've got our little micro SD card in there with all the software preloaded on it. Um, and then I've got uh, a USB port so that if we need to we can plug into it from underneath quite easily uh, and then the other cable there is obviously the power cable uh, which goes out to the normal Raspberry Pi power supply. Um, and that's it, that's all that's inside there, it's nice and simple. So you've got your old Sky camera built, um, so the next thing you're going to want to do is load Raspbian on a uh, micro SD card. Um, ensure you've got uh, Wi-Fi on boot enabled, so that will enable you to just turn it on. Uh, you don't need a screen connected and keyboard, it will just connect to your wireless and then you can obviously VNC into it, etc. Um, obviously ensure VNC and SSH are enabled um, so you can connect up to it. Um, I'd suggest updating it to the latest software. Um, take some test shots, so you can use Raspi still or Raspberry Vid, um, I found that it took quite a long time to get the camera in focus so by using those I could kind of keep mucking around with it and keep taking test shots until I found it was right. Um, yeah after that load your old Sky repository um, and set up the auto start option on it so that you can just turn the camera on and it will start capturing straight away. Um, my one, I just put it out the window when uh, when I want it, so clear nights, meteor showers, things like that. Um, but you could just leave it running all the time. I know a lot of people do that. Um, yeah. So when the morning comes, VNC into your camera, um, do a file transfer, and get the images off to, to your own computer, and then just start go, going through, see what you've captured. So to make a time lapse, um, you just want to take your images and drop them into a video editing piece of software. I use Sony Vegas, um, and if you go into Preferences, Editing, uh, there's an option in there where you can set the, it says the new still image length in seconds. So set that really low, and then when you drop all your images into the timeline, it should just make them all really short, uh, short clips so that they play fast. 
to, to make a Star Trails image, um, I use a bit of software called Star Trails, but there are, you know, there's other packages out there. Um, obviously, you drop your images in. I tend to go through my images first and just see if there's any um, that perhaps got too much daylight in or cloud um, at kind of the start or the end of the session. Remove those uh, and then just process it, and you should end up with something looking like that. Um, you can see a couple of ISS passes there. You'll notice on your Star Trails images that there's always this one star here which doesn't move. Um, that's Solaris, uh, also known as the North Star. Um, it's almost exactly aligned with the Earth's spin axis. So as the Earth rotates, um, all the other stars appear to rotate around that. Um, our, our ancestors actually believed that the Earth was the centre of the universe and that all of the stars rotated around us. I don't think they realised that um, actually we're, we're rotating as well. Definitely worth looking around online because you'll find websites where you can uh, put in your location and it'll tell you the times of International Space Station passes. Um, so yeah, obviously put your camera out and see if you can capture it. You'll, you'll usually see it go past as just a straight line through the sky. I think that then concludes our video, so go build it, stick it outside and um, see what you capture. <laughs>